Let's now look at the interpretation of acceleration in polar coordinates from a geometrical point of view. A particle is moving along a curved path as shown. R is its position vector. We know that the instantaneous velocity v is given by this expression. v equals r dot r hat plus r theta dot theta hat, where r hat and theta hat are the radial and tangential unit vectors respectively. We can write this as v r r hat plus v theta theta hat where vr and v theta are the radial and tangential components of v. We will look at the velocity at two different times, treating the radial and tangential components separately. Let us consider the radial component of the velocity first. The radial component of the velocity at A is VR, and the radial component of the velocity at B is VR plus the change in VR, delta VR. We can slide the vector at B down to join the tail of the vector at A and magnify the diagram. The change in VR, in other words, the vector delta VR, has both a radial and a tangential component. The magnitude of the radial component of the vector delta VR is just delta VR in the direction of the unit vector R hat. And the magnitude of the tangential component is VR delta theta in the theta hat direction. The rate of change of the radial component of the vector, delta vr, is given by this expression. The limit as delta t tends to zero of delta vr over delta t times r hat, which is just equal to dvr by dt, r hat, which is equal to r double dot r hat. This corresponds to the first term in our equation for acceleration in polar coordinates. The rate of change of the tangential component of the vector, delta vr, is given by the limit as delta t tends to zero of vr delta theta by delta t times theta hat, which is equal to vr, theta dot, theta hat, which is equal to r dot, theta dot, theta hat, which is one half of the Coriolis acceleration term. Therefore, half of the Coriolis acceleration arises from the change in the direction of the radial velocity. Now let us consider the tangential component of velocity. This changes from v theta at A to v theta plus delta v theta at B. Sliding the vector at B down and magnifying the diagram as before, we see that the change in v theta, delta v theta, the red vector, has a component in the negative r direction. Which is equal to v theta delta theta in magnitude. The rate of change of this component is given by this equation. The limit as delta t tends to zero of minus v theta delta theta divided by delta t times r hat, which is equal to minus v theta theta dot r hat, which is equal to minus r omega theta dot r hat, which is just equal to minus r theta dot squared r hat, 
which is the centripetal acceleration in our polar coordinate acceleration equation. The tangential component of the red vector, delta v theta, in the theta hat direction is delta v theta. Since v theta is equal to r theta dot, there are two ways in which the tangential speed can change. If theta dot increases by delta theta dot, v theta increases by r delta theta dot. Secondly, if r increases by delta r, v theta increases by delta r theta dot. It follows that delta v theta is equal to r delta theta dot plus delta r theta dot. And the rate of change is given by the limit as delta t tends to zero of delta v theta divided by delta t times theta hat, which is equal to the limit as delta t tends to zero of r delta theta dot divided by delta t plus delta r divided by delta t times theta dot times theta hat, which is just equal to r theta double dot plus r dot theta dot times theta hat. This second term of this expression is the remaining half of the Coriolis acceleration. This part arises from the change in the tangential speed due to the change in the radial distance. <laughs>